Nikola Tesla used impulses for his advanced research into electricity. In his 1890s lectures, he explained how he created these impulses by discharging a capacitor with a spark gap and quenching the spark gap with a strong magnetic field. In his search for more efficient impulse generation, he later changed his capacitor discharge method to a coil discharge. And this coil discharge method is also usable for solid state technology, as it doesn't need a spark gap. Instead of closing the switch, we need to open the switch to produce the impulse. In this video I will explain and show the solid state method I use to create high voltage positive and negative impulses from a coil discharge, which are also known as back EMF or inductive spikes. Hi, my name is Ivo and I'm doing research into Nikola Tesla's radiant energy, which is based on impulse electricity. The magnetic field of a coil can be used to create these impulses. Let's take a look how this works. For this we need a fast switch that is able to close and open the circuit really fast. A MOSFET switch is the fastest option for this. And by placing two silicon carbon MOSFETs in series, I double the voltage capability, which makes me able to produce 3500 volt impulses. And I already published this circuit in another video. These MOSFETs always have an internal body diode, which we will use to create the impulses very efficiently. A regular MPN transistor can also be used to create impulses, except with a lower voltage due to the transistor limitations. A reed switch is also a good option as it can handle high voltages, but it is limited in its switching speed. Since these do not have internal body diodes like a MOSFET has, we need to add a parallel diode to the switch. More about this later in this video. IGBTs are also able to switch fast, but they are much slower in opening than a MOSFET can switch, and this makes them less suitable. And since IGBTs also need a gate driver, just like a MOSFET needs a gate driver, then the choice for a MOSFET is obvious. Let's first take a look at what is happening with the power supply, the switch and the coil. First, I'll use a battery as the power supply. This is the most easiest. When the switch is closed, the power supply can provide a dielectric field voltage to the coil. The coil transforms this voltage into a magnetic field, which we can measure as a current. Now we can turn off the positive dielectric field voltage supply by opening the MOSFET switch. This is called a high side switch as the positive, the high supply is being switched. When the switch is open really fast, the magnetic field energy is still present around the coil and it will start to transform into a dielectric field voltage and again transform back into a magnetic field current. In other words, the coil becomes resonant and produces a 90 degrees out of phase current and a voltage sine wave. With an ideal switch this continues until all the energy inside the coil is lost due to the radiation of heat from the resistance, electromagnetic radiation and ground currents. But with a MOSFET switch we always have a body diode. The first negative voltage half wave is blocked by the body diode. And this resonant half-wave is the impulse we need to research Nikola Tesla's work. The body diode will start conducting when the voltage of the resonant coil becomes positive. 
and this is at the second half of the resonant cycle. The body diode then conducts the positive energy of the coil back into the supply. If we use a reed switch or another switch without this body diode, we can add a fast diode in parallel with the reed switch. And this parallel diode needs to be capable of handling the fast impulse current and voltages. The positive energy of the coil then flows out of the coil up through the body diode back to the battery, recharging it, making it a very efficient circuit. By adding a parallel capacitor to the battery, we make it even more efficient. The impulses first charge up the fast capacitor and then the capacitor charges up the slower battery. The result is a very efficient method for producing negative voltage impulses. So, that is the basics. But if you don't use a battery but a power supply that can't handle those impulses, then we need to protect it. To do this, we need to add a diode and a capacitor. The diode is placed in series with the positive voltage supply. And since the impulse energy is very fast, we need an extra fast diode to block it. A MERV 440 diode is able to do this. And the capacitor is placed with one leg between the diode and the MOSFET and the other leg to ground. The positive energy from the coil that passes up through the body diode of the MOSFET is now blocked by the fast diode and will charge up the capacitor where it will remain until the next closing of the MOSFET switch. The energy is then recycled again, used to charge up the coil with a magnetic field again. And since the large capacitor is charged up by a single positive impulse, the voltage stays relatively low. And thus we can use a relatively low voltage diode. The capacitor also needs to be able to handle the fast charge. Since the voltages will never become high, a WEMA 1 microfarad rated for 100 volts DC polypropylene capacitor can be used. So the negative voltage impulse is the first resonant half wave that is created after opening the switch. Now we understand how to create negative impulses, but how does this work for positive impulses? When the positive voltage supply is interrupted, we create a negative voltage impulse. But when we interrupt the negative voltage supply of the coil, we can create positive impulses because the resonant ringing of the coil now starts with the positive voltage ring. So to create positive impulses, we need to place the MOSFET switch on the negative side of the coil. And this is called low side switching. Then the same process occurs. The body diode now first sees the positive voltage, which it blocks. Then due to the resonant transformation, the voltage becomes negative and the body diode opens up for the second half wave. We again need a blocking diode to protect the power supply and a capacitor to store the negative impulse energy for recycling in the next cycle when the MOSFET switches closed again. But to do this, the whole circuit is now mirrored. Now, what can we do with these impulses? The impulses are created at the connection point between the MOSFET switch and the coil. And from there on, we can connect other circuitry where we can use these impulses. In my case, I guide the impulses into a series resonant coil, which I use as a primary coil. I also use them to charge up a DC capacitor, which I use for creating a DC offset on that primary coil.
Okay, this is the setup. I've got the MOSFET switch. The power supply comes in here, goes through the diode. I've got two diodes, but I only need one. And then here is the capacitor that charges up from the second half wave of the resonant coil, being blocked by the diode. The MOSFET switch with two series MOSFETs that each have a body diode that will pass the second half wave up into the capacitor being blocked by the diode. Here is the high voltage probe which is connected to the source of the MOSFET and the coil. So let's now check the oscilloscope. I'll turn the system on and we can look at how this looks and look at the power consumption. Okay, this is the oscilloscope. In yellow, the voltage of the bifilar coil being probed. And I've got a 500 volts per division. So each line vertically is 500 volts. And in purple with two volts per division, I've got the MOSFET switch. I'll turn it on for you. If the signal is high, then the coil is being powered by the supply because the switch is opened. If the voltage is low, then the switch is opened up and then the coil starts oscillating and should produce a resonant half wave. Okay, the system is now switched on and I'm gonna push up the power supply to produce the impulse. And here we have a minus 500 volt impulse. And this is at 70,000 cycles per second. So I've got 70,000 impulses per second of minus 500 volts. And this is at two times 8.4 volts on the supply. I'm gonna push it up way beyond this. Negative 1000 volts, negative 1500 volts, negative two thousand volts and a little bit higher that's it so let me show you now the a photo of the power supply the power supply is a dual channel which i switched in series which makes it possible to produce double the amount of voltage and this time it's 32.3 volts times two that is pushing into the system at only 0 0.1 amps that is only 6.46 watts is being pushed into the system and is lost due to the diodes and the mosfets and the resistance of the cable and the resistance of the capacitor to produce these high voltage impulses now let me zoom in to those impulses so you can see that it really is a half wave because it doesn't really look like a sine wave right now as you can see, it is a resonant half wave and it has a duration of around 700 nanoseconds. And if I make the time base quicker, then it looks like a single spike. But actually, these spikes are resonant half waves. When we provide a coil with a voltage, it builds up a magnetic field. When the supply circuit is quickly switched open, the coil becomes resonant. If we then redirect the second half wave of the resonant cycle through the body diode into the capacitor for reuse, we end up with the first half of the resonant wave, which is the unipolar impulse Nikola Tesla used. The second half wave of the resonant wave is thus reused, making this a very efficient method for creating unipolar impulses. When the positive supply is switched, this is called high side switching. The resonant wave then starts with a negative voltage. And when the negative supply to the coil is being switched, this is called low side switching. The resonance then starts with a positive voltage half wave, which is the impulse. I open source my research results and insights on this YouTube channel. You can learn a lot by watching my other videos. And since my research is open sourced, no patents can or will be applied. This means 
the research is for the benefit for us all. If you want to fund my research, you can do so by leaving a donation on my PayPal account, which is listed below. If you have questions, you can post them in the comment section below my video. I'll do my best to read them and answer them all. Thank you for watching and see you next time.